This is a video tutorial on spatial joins in QGIS. So in one of the previous videos, we looked at a data set that was city council districts with the number of rat sightings in each city council district. So I wanted to look at the styling and how we got there separately, because they're two very different topics. This is how we got there. So a spatial join is a join a join is how you bring together two disparate data sources. So we have the rat sightings, which are their own thing. They're just points, right? They're all just a bunch of points. And we have the city council districts, which are just polygons. Each city council district has its own polygon. And we want to bring those together in some way. In this case, we want to add a, not that, we want to add a column to this attribute table that gives us the count, the number of rat sightings in each individual district. So the way we do that is, it's actually relatively simple. So we go up to the vector dropdown, and there are a bunch of really useful things in here, but Today, we're just going to look at, sorry, I lose this all the time, analysis, analysis tools, and then there's points in Polygon, which should make sense. We're looking at the, the rat sightings points in city council district polygons. I'm going to click on that. So, um, so Q just asks us for a few things. It asks us for the input polygon vector layer. There's only one choice in this case because we only have the city council districts open. If we had multiple files open, we'd want to make sure that we're getting the right one. Uh, same thing with the rat sightings points. Um, if we had multiple point layers, it would ask us for them here. All right, and then it's going to create a count field. Um, this is the default. It's all caps. It doesn't necessarily make sense to me. I'm going to call it count. Um, that is totally up to you, What, whatever you want to call it. I want to add it to the canvas once I open it. And I'm going to browse. And I don't want to put it in this folder. I do want to just put it on my desktop. Rat sightings council districts. Save. Okay. Okay. So in this case, they have non matching CRS. So I believe the rat sightings are in 2263, but the city council districts are not. Um, I don't think it's going to matter in this case, but let's see. We might have to do it twice. So that this takes a few minutes. If you had more data, it could take it could take a long time. Okay, so we see that we now have two versions of the city council districts. If I open the attribute table on the new one, we see that it has a, coin, a count field. So it looks like it worked even though the projections were not the same. You might want to just, to be safe, save both layers as the same projection and not worry about it. So, so before I close that, um, actually, I want to stay here for a sec. So you can see that we have the count. And we can sort this, and we can see which ones have the most. Um, this data is exactly like the data we were looking at before. You can kind of see, you can roughly see that we're highlighting this one. Uh, we can see which one has the least. That part of Queens. OK. Um, okay, so as I talked about in the other video, the count is not enough. We don't want to just look at the count. We want to make sure that we're talking in relative terms so that we're not, we're not unfairly comparing city council districts. Okay, so it's going to be a multi-step process. What we want to do is we want to find the, the relative density of of rat sightings in each one. And mostly we're going to do that 
by comparing the count. We're going to divide the count by the shape area. Okay? Um, so QGIS not only can show you the attributes for geographic data, but it can also edit those attributes. And the way you do that, first of all, is you need to turn on editing mode. So a lot of features are hidden from you until you enter editing mode. You see, when I went into editing mode, all of these edges got red. That's because I can actually go in there and edit those edges now. I'm not going to do that here. Um, what I am going to do, though, is open the field calculator. Okay. So I'm not going to only update one selected feature. You could do that. Um, because I had this feature selected, it, it assumed I wanted to do that. What I want to do is uh, create a new field. And I'm going to call it count, or all right, I'm going to call it density. And I want the, there are only four field types that it could be, since this is a shape file, either an integer, which means it has no digits after the decimal point, decimal number has some digits after the decimal point, uh, text, or a date. In this case, we are going to have very small numbers, because the density is very low. And um, I want the precision to be pretty high. I cannot make it that large. Really? I guess I can only go up to 20. I'll go up to 20 then. OK, so um, what you can do is just really simply, as remember when we were selecting by expressions, we're kind of we're building a selection in the same way. So we want to divide the count by that shape area field. If you didn't have this already, there are ways to calculate that here under geometry, right? And I'm going to hit OK. Great. So now you can see the density is here. It's very, very small for each one. Thankfully, if if these numbers were larger, that would be that would be pretty impressive. Assuming this is in square feet, um, how many rat sightings are there per square foot? I'm glad it's small. Um, I actually don't know the area in this case, and it doesn't really matter in this case as long as they're relatively uh, different. Okay, so so from here we have two things we can do. I am going to create a... So I'm going to sort these, and we can see this is the least dense one. We can see which one is the most dense. Um, remember, I created this density field by um, dividing the count by the area. And I did that all through the field calculator right here. You can do lots of other things. You could update a field if you already had a field, but wanted to change the value. You could absolutely do that here. Okay, I'm going to exit editing mode by clicking this. It's going to ask me whether I want to save those changes or not. I do, and I just saved them. Great. Okay, and now I should be able to do similar kinds of visualizations to the ones I was doing before. I'm just going to do this as a quick sanity check, just to make sure I didn't mess something up. Um, I'm going to go with the natural breaks again and apply. Okay. Um, that looks pretty sane. Um, that looks pretty much like what we had before. So I'm going to say that's that is correct. I think I think we I think we did this right. Um, 
interesting, right? So the only issue with doing it this way is our labels need really need some work. So remember the numbers were super small, um, really tiny. So the labels you're going to have to work with a bit uh, before you create a legend for a map like this. Um, probably what I would do is remove the labels for this one that one, that one, and just say most dense and least dense. That is totally, that is the only thing that's going to make sense to someone reading this map. Okay. Okay, so that was really quick look at spatial joins and normalizing your data a bit.